People, you have to understand that in your calling, if you are truly called by God, you are going to be persecuted. Period. If you are truly called by God, you are going to be persecuted. That's whether it's physical, emotionally, financially, spiritually. The list goes on, people. You are not called to sit back and just do some 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 teaching on YouTube and preaching and in these in these uh wanna be synagogue buildings and stuff like that and then go home to your family or cut the computer off or cut your phones off and then go back to uh doing what you was doing. <laughs> no. That's 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 not it. When you're called by God, you are busy for God. You sometimes may not be able to get some rest because you are on call 24 hours. There is not a certain time of the day that you are called and doing duties for God. You are on call for God 24-7. Now, yeah, we get a day rest. He give us that blessing to get that day rest. But even on Sabbath, we still are attending to our Father. We still attend to our Father, and we're reading, we're teaching, we're studying. Hey, serving God ain't no joke, huh? Now, with all that said, you have to understand our purpose. We are called out to do the opposite of what the vast majority of the world is doing. We have been called out to serve God's kingdom. A lot of wannabe chosen ones don't understand that. We are called out to serve God's kingdom to come. We're supposed to be representing the kingdom. You have to read the gospel books in the New Testament. Mark, Luke, John, Matthew. You have to read those books because those books give you a vivid understanding on what Jesus was doing when he was begotten here as an example and to die for all of our sins. If Jesus hadn't made that happen, if he hadn't executed that purpose, we would all be gone because of our sins. Now, before Jesus was... uh. Uh, crucified at the cross Jesus did things that we are supposed to be doing like teaching boldly teaching the truth not sugarcoating it huh see when you teach boldly and when you teach truth to these wolves out here to these demonic souls out here you are going to be unfavored You are going to be misunderstood. You are going to be well unlike because they don't understand the kingdom. They don't understand God. Now, when Jesus, after saying that he was the Messiah, which is who he is. But when he was appointed before Pontius Pilate, you have to understand, he was appointed first to the, the Jewish high priest named Joseph Caiaphas, if I'm pronouncing it right. Please look at your Bibles. I think it's in Luke 22, uh, verse 19. Y'all got to forgive me if I have that wrong, but I know it's Luke 22 something. But he was appointed to the Jewish high priest named Caiaphas. And the 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 other Jews, which are called the Pharisees, they were all at their at the man's presence, and Jesus was there, bind up like as a prisoner, and and they were hoping that Jesus would have sugarcoated to satisfy Caiaphas' uh, uh, pleasure in what he wanted to hear, so he could be what a uh, secure of his reason of being a high priest huh 
They were waiting on Jesus to sugarcoat who he truly is and who he, who he said he was back then. So they, the Caiaphas asked him, who are you? <laughs> and Jesus said, he is the Messiah. He, he said, are you the Messiah? And Jesus said, I am. Huh? What? He was supposed to say he wasn't? He said, I am. And so that made Caiaphas mad. That triggered him. And he stood up and got mad and called out, oh, God. Uh, uh, he quoted a scripture. I forgot what it was, but he quoted, you know, a scripture. But he was mad, so he tore his robe off. He got mad and tore his robe because his securities, which is now insecurities, was attacked. Huh? His insecurities was attacked in front of the the lower people who were the Pharisees, the uh, the Jewish uh, people. Th- they seen and heard this, <laughs> so he got mad. The high priest Cyphus got mad and stood up and tore his robe because he was attacked with truth. Now, if they was also saying that Jesus was crazy or he's not this and and even Pontius Pilate after after that Caiaphas situation they went on and agreed to send him to Pontius Pilate even Pontius Pilate said nah man he's crazy well if that was the case then why y'all and y'all fellas why did we have to go through all this with uh, persecuting him and sending him to the cross to be crucified see what I'm saying It, it gets deep but what I'm trying to tell y'all, when we don't sugarcoat through our calling, this is what's going to happen. But if you're so-called chosen and you're sugarcoating your teachings to make the world feel good and like you, you are not called by God. You are truly not called. Or if you are called, you're, you're afraid. And you need to repent and go get it right. Get it together. Because if you're a call, it's not a game. This is not nothing to play with. Huh? Serving God after being appointed to serve him in this wicked world is not a game, man. You can hurt yourselves. Huh? You can hurt yourselves more than than hurting others. With your teachings. So what I'm saying is this. When I'm out here teaching. On YouTube especially. Because I do the same thing at work. You know. Every time I open up my mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm advising. And, and, and I'm making reason with people's. Uh, throughout the conversation. They to the point. They, they getting tired of me. I have to I have to keep quiet now because they getting mad. And I don't mean being quiet back in a timid way, but I put my wall up because now it's starting to get a little negativity uh vibes at the at the work. But that's another story, but I'm just trying to give you all an example of what the things you're going to be uh confronted with and things you're going to be experiencing as a true called out one you're going to be experiencing this shenanigan people are going to envy you people are going to uh uh jealous you people are going to take everything you said to heart because deep down inside them demons don't like you So the demons inside of people are going to be guiding, muppeting, and sabotaging people's uh, actions. They're thinking of you because they are not saved. You got to remember that. Jesus said to his handpicked disciples that I'm I'm sending you out like sheep amongst wolves. So be strewed, huh, as snakes. And innocent as does. People have to understand. Shrewd man. You got to be on point with your judgment. Don't be out here naive. You know what I'm saying. Be on point. With your call. With your judgments. So you can be decent. You you ain't in no conflicts. You're not stupid to be. uh, uh, in, in, In condemnation. Amongst these wolves. 
You're not fooled easily. And your hands is clean because you know how to get out the situation. You know how to avoid the situation. And you're still teaching. See, only the only drama that comes that comes upon us is just being unfavored through our teachings. That's it. Anything other than that, we're bringing it amongst ourselves. Huh? Now, with my life, I'm going through the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm teaching on YouTube and I'm getting all these negative vibes after my teachings. But I have to continue doing what God has appointed me to do, whether people like it or not. I am gaining so many enemies that the people on the outside are choosing to be against me because of the the look of the majority that's against me. If, if three people don't like you, that fourth person who had never had a problem with you can see this and say, well, I don't know what's going on, but I don't want no dealings with her either if everybody over here don't like her. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want that in my, in my life. I don't want nobody not liking me, so I ain't hanging with her. I'm not talking to her. I'd rather go over here with these people. And But see, that's fine because that's demonic nonsense within people so you have to understand we that's a good thing people are afraid of this stuff that's a good thing that's less drama you don't have this this shenanigan of unrighteousness around you so everything is being appointed everything is happening by god's uh, uh, a will everything is happening not by an accident and not because we've done anything wrong but because of god's will he said don't fret when your enemies is prospering in their evil ways you have to stand strong in your calling you have people that may seem like they're cool with you but deep down inside they'll try to set you up for failure so when people try to come at you and try to deceive you and everything, you got to be on point, which is called strew. You have to be on point with your calling and your judgment so you can have your hands clean. God says serve and serve in righteousness, serve in love and be strew so you can be clean throughout your calling. Now. With my channels, my videos, I get all the negativity feedback. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I've done nothing wrong. Even when I may respond to these people, I respond. I'm happy. And I'm letting them know that it's going to continue to be that way. I may say uh, to someone who may give a positive uh, comment. I've said you've gained well. I said it's words of wisdom. Thank you. That's words of wisdom. And if someone get ignorant with their comment, I may say that's words of wisdom. D-U-M-B. Also known as Dodo. And keep it simple. You don't have to respond by trying to prove why you teaching. No, you don't have to prove to no one who will never understand you in the first place. That's what Jesus did. When Caiaphas asked him, are you the Messiah? Jesus said, I am. Pontius Pilate asked him questions. Jesus at times didn't even answer him because it wasn't worth even answering. Because Pontius Pilate had already had his mind made up on what he was going to do to him in the first place. So it's nothing more that we can do. We're not going way out trying to prove ourselves to a bunch of wolves who are not willing to understand us anyway. He did his teachings to Nicodemus explaining to him about how to be born again again because demons still didn't understand it and he sat down we don't know how long but he sat down and had a whole chat with nicodemus explaining on what born again mean and the man still didn't understand it so why are we explaining to people about why they shouldn't dislike us about why they hate us they're not going to understand this, people, because they are not saved. They are not going to understand it, even when they ask us questions, even when they want us to prove to them. They basically just get off on seeing if we're going to be stupid enough to try to explain ourselves to them. They already know they're not going to understand it. They already know they're not going to accept it.
They just want to see if we are going to explain ourselves. And like I said, when Pontius Pilate asked Jesus some questions, it was chance that Jesus just stood there silent because it wasn't worth it. Huh? We know our calling. We know what we're here doing. And we're going to do it all the way to the end. Jesus did what he did. John the Baptist did what he did. Paul did what he did. Everybody who was called Abraham, all them, everybody that was called by God, that was appointed by God, were and is here to serve a purpose. And we have to go all the way to the end without giving up and without sugarcoating our calling. You have to understand the example that Jesus led for us, man. He John the Baptist paid the way, giving an example, and uh, uh, had the mission be known before Jesus came. And when Jesus came, he led the example for us, the called out ones. You have to understand your calling. You are called to serve a purpose, and you have to go all the way to the end, even through your attacks. You can't just sit up here and think that your call as a chosen one is just to make videos and sit back and just keep pouring out your feelings about, about this and that and the other. That's not all we are here to do. We are here also to be mocked. We are also here to be persecuted. We are also here to be laughed at. We are also here to defeat the demons inside of people who are the vast majority of this world. I'm telling y'all, it's going to pay off. God said, just be glad your name is written in heaven. You have to understand that, man. These people names are not written in heaven yet. And I say yet because we are preparing for, uh, we are going to be teaching during the great white throne, which is the second resurrection. The second resurrection is located in uh, revelation 20 people are for the vast majority to receive salvation. They're going to have a second chance to receive salvation and the majority, huh? The vast majority will receive salvation. They will be saved. That's why I said yet. The wicked, hallelujah, the wicked are the ones who are not going to get it by choice. They're going to be tossed into the flames. They're going to be thrown into the lake of fire, which is the third resurrection. Those are going to be the few who are not going to get it. They are not going to take part of the kingdom. Those are the ones who will choose to be left in their ignorance because they are stubborn. They choose to be hearted, hardened. You know what I'm saying? They choose to be hard hardened. So those are the ones, which is the few who are going to be tossed into the lake of fire. So right now it's about the first resurrection, which is us. The true called out ones are going to take place in the first resurrection. But also before I leave, you would not take part of the first resurrection called out ones if you are not willing to go all the way to the end with your calling. You have to understand, I have been called to tell this video. You are not called to just tell your stories. You are not called just to tell somebody else about themselves on videos. You are called to teach and attack Demons, that's what you are here for. You are here to attack demons. <laughs>